is there a motive to bring up false allegations? And there absolutely is. My name is Ryan Dreyer. I've been a family law attorney for 11 years. I've done over 100 domestic violence trials and I've done probably about another 100 in the last year uh, just representing fathers. We see a lot of use of the domestic violence laws to gain an unfair advantage in child custody and visitation. It also um, is used in some instances uh, to prevent uh, a male or a father from the receiving spouses because there's a presumption against uh, receiving spousal support to someone that has committed domestic violence. So it has broad reaching implications when you look at, is there a motive to bring up false allegations? And there absolutely is. Especially when you look at the fact that domestic violence laws uh, or domestic violence restraining orders are granted on a preponderance of evidence standards rather than clear and convincing evidence. It's very easy to get a restraining order, and I think shockingly easy to get a restraining order um, if you're a, a, a man. I, I think it works both ways, but the majority of domestic violence cases are brought against men. And people love to basically try to throw the dad under the bus for sometimes very innocent, um, very innocent behaviors that are conflated or are uh, blown out of proportion. And so, Part of what we're doing when we are putting on our case is we're defending their allegations and providing the complete history to the judge, right? The judge is a trier of fact. Um, you know, I practice in California. And so I've practiced in pretty much every family law courtroom in Southern California, uh, all five Southern counties. Some judges um, are very tight with domestic violence orders and some pass them out for text messages. Right. And um, so uh, that's the kind of general overview. But my practice is uh, generally related to trial advocacy of finding the truth uh, behind uh, part of also what I'd like to do today is um, put the information out to, to, to men of, hey, there's certain behaviors that you think are innocuous, but end up having you lose custody. What are the typical tactics? Uh, on using false allegations to sort of muddy the water in the litigation process? Well, uh, a, a lot of the times you'll have a he said, she said. And the domestic violence and restraining order can be granted on a he said, she said basis. If the judge just happens to find the other party a little bit more credible than you, that's all it is, right? We have different standards in law. We have proof beyond a reasonable doubt. That's our criminal standard. That's our highest standard right? But we also have a clear and convincing evidence standard, which is used in California for elder abuse cases for civil harassment restraining order. Unfortunately, in California, we have a preponderance of evidence standard in determining what is domestic violence. One of the big instances that we see is that they will build a pattern of cases going back years and years and years, right? And a lot of times my clients won't even remember this alleged incident that occurred because it didn't occur or it was a small incident that was um, basically making a mountain out of a mole. So that's where we have to find completeness of a record. You know, as a father, you have to expect that anything that you, especially if you're in a difficult relationship, anything that you can and do say um, over social media, over text messages, over emails will be used against you. So those angry comments where you've just had enough or, and maybe the children are being kept away from you maybe you haven't seen the children and you've seen them every day of your life that guys lash out sometimes right yeah and they make comments that they don't really mean and have no history of violence right and so i think what shocks a lot of guys is the fact that they can have a completely clean criminal record that they can be great providers that they uh, can be a stand-up father and have been there for their children every day. And somehow a small incident takes away their right to custody for one year or three years or five years, right? Um, and I think it blows people away.